this challenge, non-formal training in this case, and they're going to tell us about uh, something they call cyber range. Well, I quite like coming third uh, in this block because the previous two speakers have said most of what we were going to say and also because we've been working for some 15 years in this field. I think we've got a pretty clear picture of what is going on. 18 years ago, uh, Igor was very much of a baby. I was a young man. And then we were very, very lucky to have a, a man with a vision leading the company. I'm, I'm getting old. Well, I am as well, Igor says. But we, we think that we need uh, to contribute so that future generations uh, can face the challenge of cybersecurity. We've been working together for over 15 years now, and we're very proud to say that we were very innovative, uh, very courageous, because when we first uh, gave our first presentation, uh, that was 1994, I think, the internet was beginning to sound like a familiar word, that's all. We knew that uh, that was going to change not just cycles in companies, but also uh, cybersecurity. And I can tell you a story of a time uh, when we decided uh, we had to do things differently on behalf of society. We've been together until five months ago. I think Igor is fed up with hearing me say, tell the same old story year after year. So basically, if we need talent, uh, if we need innovation, we uh, decided we need to uh, have a smaller cycle we wanted to defend, uh, and we wanted to find a good name for it. Those of you who know us, uh, you know that uh, first letters are important for us, I for Igor, or X for Xavier. So we now have cyber ticks. T for talent, uh, which has been mentioned time and time again today as the key to the future. I for Igor. Igor is a very intelligent man. So I for Igor and for intelligent Igor, so we can improve uh, business processes. And then X for Xavier, for me, for experience. I'm over 50 now, so that's what I have, experience. But hey, good news, uh, over 50-year-olds uh, can work too. That's good news for a number of us here, because not so long ago, uh, people got early re retirement uh, aged 50. I was lucky. I was not 50 then, so I'm still working, and I love it. So what is CyberTix? Well, it's uh, a little bit what we've been doing for some 20 years in a nutshell. I don't have mules and uh, and the cart like John Lyons, but uh, still, I have pretty old pictures here, right? There's been a huge revolution from the telegraph to look at those infrastructures uh, that we don't really understand uh, in the 21st century. This conference uh, is also about revolutions. We've had four revolutions, one with steam, that was 1.0, electricity 2.0, uh, that improved uh, lifestyle and conditions. And uh, because of uh, oil, crude oil, that was the third one, sorry, crude oil, and the fourth one is uh, information. And I agree with Jorge. What we're doing is not making businesses amenable to IT. We're changing businesses. We're changing uh, our mindsets uh, when we think of a business. Because uh, even automating plants uh, and making the same old products was not enough. Because uh, in the past, we had physical assets in companies, whereas now, more and more, assets are digital. Uh, what's really valuable is information, is data, and that's why we need to change and transform. 
So I'm not going to come here and tell you we need to change technology. That's not the case. Uh, Previous revolutions have been piling up and up. And then uh, when consultants talk about blockchain and IoT and big data, we need to learn all of that uh, from scratch. Uh, and then public institutions uh, are pushing us all to take a step forward. How can we do it right? Well, having a clear new scenarios where we want to compete, uh, putting all of that into a spinner and the magic solution coming out. That would be great, right? Uh, for SMEs, for instance. But that's not the case, right? When we started uh, back in 1999, uh, we used to give comparisons uh, between physical robots and logic robots. But uh, in the US, in 1998, uh, there was a uh, physical death, uh, three deaths, sorry, uh, in physical thefts or robberies, no deaths, but so many more, so much more money uh, was stolen. Uh, we know about executives uh, that who have been sacked because of not doing things right from the point of view of um, security or and a cry. Uh, that's another one. A cry. Sorry, that was another uh, great example of what we're saying. Yeah, who lost three million accounts? I think it was. Why? Because data information is the fuel of our business now. I don't like talking about cyber security, but uh, cyber insecurity, uh, because some three trillion dollars uh, will be wasted or lost uh, because of lack of security, that is cyber insecurity. I remember uh, back in the day uh, when I uh, was a quality expert, uh, well, it took some time to convince people that quality has a, a competitive advantage. And I think it's very similar now with uh, security. And how did Igor and I start working on security? Uh, well, with WannaCry. It was really famous, right? Some 600,000 pieces of news talking about it at the same time. And critically, many companies uh, we had been working with were really, really confused. They couldn't understand how it started or the um, uh, outcome. Some firms were so worried uh, that they wanted to stop production. And there have been a number of cases uh, where companies had to do so to avoid negative impacts. We've had more severe cases uh, than WannaCry in the last 12 or 15 years. I remember uh, Australians uh, used to suffer in 2000, 2001, uh, terrible uh, attacks uh, in water infrastructures. And after that, Warner cry uh, meant people start raising their hands and uh, saying, hey, I think I know what the problem is. I think I've got the solution to that problem. Why? Because in hindsight, uh, you can see it. Uh, but that's not good enough uh, for cybersecurity. You need to preempt. You need to uh, prevent. We now have two centers of cybersecurity in the Basque country. Well, uh, well and good. But in our experience, it's not a good idea having lots of different sites giving information on the same thing. We know uh, there's a new directive, then the new regulation, GDPR, and the NIST law that says th there can only be one point of contact uh, whenever there's an in incident. We can't have God knows how many different centers and uh, institutions uh, I should contact if I have an incident. Igor is giving me nasty looks because I'm taking too long. What's going on? Oh, you only have to open the newspaper and find three, four pieces of news on data losses and thefts and malware and all the rest of it. So what's been wasted and lost? Well, uh, so many customers uh, with, that have been lost uh, 
the PlayStation case, so many cases with X Facts, for instance, uh, lost 25% percent uh, in their market share only recently. Why? Because of information loss. And Alex uh, said it earlier on, uh, demographics uh, will uh, bring uh, millions of Chinese in to swimming pools, he said. Well, they're coming to companies, to our companies, uh, trying to intrude why are all those Chinese people in the swimming pool? Well, probably because they've stolen enough uh, intellectual property so they can now retire and have a good life. Well, uh, who governs cyberspace? Who governs our lives? Because it's big fish, right? It's Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, people who have our data, uh, they have their own models. And then a few countries uh, with no governance, uh, China, Russia, the US, Korea. That means that uh, the cyberspace uh, where we need to defend our space well, uh, in the real world, uh, we have video cameras, but who defends uh, digital workers and employees? To do it right, uh, we should have one single digital identity, one single concept. So what have we been doing? Nothing new, really. We've had uh, a pretty good time of things. We don't uh, ride horses anymore, we ride tractors. And that's uh, how we compete with other people. And we think uh, our enemies uh, ride tractors too. Well, that's far from true. Look at that. That's what our enemies are driving. Uh, cyber criminals, cyber terrorists, cyber uh, industrial spies. Uh, they have amazing cars, they have uh, the best experts, and that's why they can steal our information. That's the battle we're waging. So uh, in cyberspace, there's all sorts. Uh, there's cybercrime, cyberbullying, uh, and uh, how can we handle that? Well, unfortunately, uh, we're just impulsive, and we start uh, to imagine and create models that uh, end up in chaos uh, when it comes to managing an incident. Those of you who are old enough, you might remember the uh, uh, mad cars, the races, those cartoons. That's wrong, because we are investing more than ever in the past. But well, we're still terribly uh, insecure or unsecured. We know uh, we need some one million new experts in cybersecurity. Is it going to be one million or two million? Well, who knows? In the States uh, or in Israel, as Benjamin knows, they can't generate any more talent. and. Uh, they, they keep training experts, and they're all needed. So this is an industry which is not just local, uh, but uh, we can also outsource that talent. The turnover uh, in our industry uh, is over 35%. Uh, we are stealing uh, other people's employees. Uh, when, when we hear uh, a new company is going to come uh, to our area in this sector and they're going to generate, I don't know how many jobs, they don't generate them. They just steal uh, those employees from other people. I can't remember, uh, somebody asked a question this morning, uh, what is the key uh, factor for innovation uh, to improve the gap or bridge the gap? Well. One is automation, robotics, and the second one uh, would be something that we've been thinking about some for, for a long time. Uh, we call it training, and that's why we've been working for a long, long time with vocational training centers. Uh, it's training. We need to train. It's just like in football. Uh, when the ball comes to you, you know, uh, you need to know how to defend, true, but attack as well and think differently. 
we've brought you a video clip that I think uh, will explain things much better than us. The need for highly trained cyber forces to secure national, military, and civilian networks against cyber attacks is critical. CyberBit's cyber training system enables trainees to confront real-world cyber attacks, providing them the skills, the knowledge, and the experience to face such events in their operational environments. Advanced Training Management System enables full control of the training session, allowing trainee team allocation based on their skills and knowledge. Selection of desirable training network, enterprise, military, or SCADA. Selection of scenarios which target the specific goals of the training session. And fully brief the trainees on their upcoming mission. During the training session, CyberBit Cyber Trainer monitors and logs all trainees' activities, network components, and devices. The trainees are evaluated in real time according to the session mission and training goals. Cyber attacks are injected into the network by a unique attack machine that fully emulates diverse real-world attacks. The cyber trainers integrated with market-leading tools that provide the trainees with the ability to detect, respond, and prevent hostile cyber attack. In the final step, with skills elevation as a focus, the trainer debriefs the team, reviewing and evaluates their activities in order to ensure improvement is achieved. CyberBit Cyber Training System, training tomorrow's cyber forces. Bueno, hau da, enpresa bat lan egiten duna cyber range metodoak erabiliz. So, we work with a cyber range method. And what is that, you might uh, wonder? Well, it's training, basically. So we have our trainers. The white team is the group of trainers generating scenarios with different situations and uh, so that uh, the game can start. So the idea is that just bus, just by pressing play, uh, all of uh, the training is recorded. There's the red team in charge of attacking and the blue team in charge of defense. Attacks can be automated as well. So we can, in some cases, just focus on defense. Uh, there are cases where we can uh, combine uh, attackers and defenders uh, working together uh, to uh, better handle an attack. And all of this with simulation technology. In the past, we were, we, we were thinking, well, we had been thinking for quite some time on simulation, how to simulate a network in a company. Well, uh, thanks to processing speed and uh, new technologies, and now it can be done, which is precisely what uh, we have uh, launched. We don't want it to be an R&D and I project, uh, but a business project. Xavier and I had been thinking about it for a long, long time, and we wanted uh, to make something that would be practical for companies, for them to be able to train and simulate their response uh, in the case of an attack. So in digital uh, ecosystems, you know perfectly well that speed is paramount. 
when something goes wrong, when a company has been attacked, uh, they call you and uh, they want it sorted and solved straight away. Well, fortunately, new technologies help us uh, be rapid in case of an attack. Here we can see uh, what we call the digital twin. The idea is that uh, we can simulate and test concepts, uh, different technology. Te we can test different technologies, which is nothing new. Uh, for instance, uh, pilots have been using simulators, simulators for training for a long, long time. And um, why is this different? You might wonder. A pilot had been tra has been trained uh, for flying, and they've been trained uh, for most of that time uh, with simulators. What about so so we we trust pilots we we trust they can fly. What about you and people in your companies? Do you trust them 100% uh, to be able to solve a problem, an attack, manage an attack if? it were to happen. You probably don't trust them 100%, which is why we feel uh, we have to build trust and confidence uh, for that to happen. And training is what does it. Here we can see some facts and figures. And you can see that probably under 30% of employees in companies have had any experience with ransomware. That is, employees uh, who have uh, at a particular time uh, had to solve a problem with, soft with ransomware. You know that uh, that can be very severe when uh, the whole of the company comes uh, to a standstill and is blocked. How many of your people, of your employees, have had an experience or a situation like this? Well, very few, and normally only in very large uh, companies. What about data filtering? How many people have had uh, experiences uh, where uh, at their company they've had to solve and manage uh, a case where information has been filtered? Not many, once again. A very, very low percentage of workers. We also know that probably under 30% of employees uh, have run tests uh, just to simulate uh, how things would work or how they would handle those situations if there was an attack. Very, very few companies do something like this, simulating an infection and seeing how the different departments, marketing, personnel, whatever human resources uh, would respond uh, to that incident. Another interesting field is tests and um, training for our experts and analysts to be able to better manage and face those risks. They, they're meant to be experts, but who tests them and sees that they're updated? Well, uh, we want to. We, we knew we wanted to work with simulators. That's why. That's why we have partnered partnered with Cyberbit, a company uh, based in Switzerland with plenty of experience, both in the private and the public sector, mostly with governments. In fact, where whereas we are more focused uh, to the private sector. The idea is that uh, we could. We can, like this, duplicate an SOC, SOC, a SOC, and run a simulator with uh, an attack as uh, the experience that simulated. Why uh, is this useful for a company? Why does it generate value? 
well, because we are training their staff uh, on the one hand, and also uh, because we would be testing different tools and technologies uh, if an attack were to happen. Another very practical point is that by running that simulation, by uh, training, companies can find uh, gaps and areas of improvement that they should solve, and also technologies are tested sometimes uh, not to purchase a particular piece of equipment. Well, before purchasing an expensive uh, piece of equipment for a number of departments, let's test it. And not only that, we can also train on different platforms. Using a particular technology to test uh, a supplier and with the same simulator be testing a product or service at the same time. This, this goes beyond training people who are working in companies and that, who need to uh, test critical elements. This, uh, this experience is uh, devised for OT and for IT. It's for a direct simulation of industrial installations. We provide with services where, by which people can be uh, prepared socks. Uh, they need to compete and collaborate. They need to have uh, more skills for the future to generate new talent. All this world that is uh, being trained in vocational training in university, they can go, can go through this competitive environment and we can assess who's who according to their skills. We can, we can certify people and industrial security is one of our, our company's assets. We need to ensure that our, the new networks are in good state. But it's, this is not just about training. It's about, it's about assessing, testing, checking the resilience level in companies when there's new attacks happening. So we have to cooperate with our partners, with our centers, in order to create new simulators. It's based on including new risks, new threats. This is not static. This is dynamic. Uh, who are not our partners? Well. The Industrial uh, Cybersecurity Center, ZIUR, in order to help uh, companies through the governments. We need to fill gaps. You know that at national level, in the de in de de defense area, people talk about cyber reservist uh, people. It's about uh, PPP, and the uh, private and, pu the pu and public sectors should cooperate. It, it's ethical, it's logical to cooperate between these two environments. Our goal is to cover a, a full spectrum for a talent generation. Sometimes we found difficulties uh, in um, the sector of cybersecurity. We want to, to simulate here because SMEs don't know about uh, assessments, auditings. And we uh, want to be a real actor, a real operator in the uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, co context, but not just in the Basque country. We're working with big manufacturers which are dominating the world. They should understand that here there is a center that is the driver of many activities want, want to work. We are submitting projects with our innovation centers. This is a type of simulator, but we need to generate new simulators. We're making robots. We need to simulate um, uh, um, security in a robotical context. We want to be uh, initiators of private and public activities. Thank you very much indeed.